Happy Monday, everyone, and happy Memorial Day, and welcome to the morning show. A lot of you might be asking, whoa, you guys are doing a morning show today? Isn't this a national holiday? To which I will defer to Joey, who came uh, over to my desk on Thursday and was like, hey, do we get Monday <laughs> off? How do, how do holidays work around and here? And I was like, that's a great question. Yeah. Uh, as an artist, uh, I never take a break from yeah. creating. Mm -hmm. uh, as a person who runs a business, we probably should give y'all a couple days off here and there. Mm -hmm. We gave you the choice, yeah. like totally take tomorrow off. A lot of people are not here today yeah. uh, for various different reasons. And you were like, no, I'm ride or die, <laughs> okay? I'm not one of those other people out there, like the thousands of people currently watching this who are like, you know what, it's Memorial Day, it's a national holiday. Yeah. It's time to reflect. It's time to thank people in our service uh, and, and armed services around the you know around the country. Mm -hmm. Not us though. We're thanking you by entertaining you. This is what we do. We're like little mini Bob Hopes. Okay. And if you're watching this someplace, if you are overseas watching this, and you're like and like this, it's your dinner time. And you're eating something cool and watching this. We thank you for your service. Um, Joey, I thank you for coming in today because thank no one you. else did. <laughs> and it was either it was either you or me, or it was going to be a solo day. <laughs> And I don't mean that in solo in the, in, in the way of like last weekend, but we will be talking about that. Uh, of course, ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't know, the Kind of Funny Morning Show comes to you each and every day here on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames with, uh, with lots of fun shenanigans. We're going to be talking about some news. We're going to talk about solo. We're going to talk about uh, steaks a little bit later because, yes, we are brought to you by Omaha Steaks, but also we are barbecuing today. Are I don't know really? if you know this. Yeah. No. Do you see how beautiful it is outside? Yeah. By all accounts, kind of, we should have taken today off. It's like the perfect holiday day in San Francisco. Oh, we get like maybe four of these a year. It was so, I, I woke up What's last night. What's the temperature night. outside? Just so we can give people out there. Just give them a, yeah, give them a, an understanding of how, it's it is 70, 70 degrees. 70 degrees, beautifully sunny, no clouds. 70 degrees, which is very, done with ease. Yeah. Is very what they say rare for A, San Francisco, and B, San Francisco on a holiday, the stars align perfectly. I do this thing, my nightly ritual before I go to bed, okay. is I like to get bundled up, okay? I put mm -hmm. a t-shirt on, I put the joggers on, I put some socks over the joggers so that, wow. yes, they can't slide down because if they slide down and my ankle gets exposed, it'll be cold and I'll be thinking about that all night. So consciously, I'll be like, huh. your ankle's cold. Gotta bundle up. About 30 minutes after going to bed, I did the thing where I was like, boom! <laughs> and had to throw all the things off because and it get into, warm. it was so warm. Yeah. That it reminded me of growing up in Southern California. Yeah. And I love that. Like growing up in Riverside, it used the temperatures used to be during the summer, maybe between 90 and 100 degrees. Sometimes it would top over 100 very easily. Oh, yeah, it's rough. And those were the days where my mom would always be like, listen, I know you guys want to turn the AC on right now, but it's going to be too expensive. Yep. So just we have to use it sparingly. sparingly. And the sparingly would always be during when it was, uh, rightfully so, the hottest portions. Yeah. So she'd start the AC. She'd let us turn it on around 10 when it was starting to get hot. <laughs> By about 4 o'clock, we'd turn it off because it would cool down and just open the windows. Yeah. But inevitably at night, it was just that... It was that silent heat. Oh, you know what I mean. I know. I know. Where what you've you mean. got it's so quiet. You got nothing to focus on but the heat. Yeah. You got a fan on you, maybe. You got a freaking like you got to turn the fan on just to get something else going you just in the room. Movement. But it's just pushing the hot heat around. Yeah, it doesn't help at all. I'm also. My, I grew up in a uh, in a track home, uh, in in a, in a nice neighborhood in, in Riverside. But I was on the second floor. Oh, so, so like it was the hot. Warmer. The heat just rise. And every once in a while, I would go down to the couch. Yep. Uh, I was like, I got to go downstairs to the couch, which always seemed like a good idea at first because they were leather couches and the leather was always oh, cool no. to the touch. It was so cold. And then and you're you there just, for four minutes. Four minutes, and then you just have to peel yourself off the couch like it's a fruit roll up because you've sweat into it. And then your mom, my mom would always come kind of like, stop sweating on the couch. Yep. Do you understand me? The couch is more expensive than you. <laughs> the couch, I like the couch more than you, yeah. is what my mom would say to us. Luckily, we had a pool growing up. We don't have a pool today, but we do have a barbecue. We will be barbecuing Omaha Steaks. Uh, thanks to Omaha Steaks uh, for sponsoring this episode. We'll get to that read a little bit later when we give away a game. Um, what's up? Exciting. No, we're giving away. We're giving away games. We are giving That's away the games. Most exciting part of today. If you guys are joining us uh, uh, on YouTube, thank you guys so much for watching this over there. Please leave a comment, uh, mm -hmm. letting us know what you guys are doing this Memorial Day. If you've got something, if you're in a foreign country and you're not celebrating this with us, let us know how work was. Apparently, today. the UK has a bank holiday today, which I don't really know what that means, but it means that they also have today off, which is exciting. Do they really? We have a great UK story later coming up. Oh. It's exciting. And I'm glad that it's you, me, and Cool Greg. Because this story, I'm going to read the whole thing. Okay. Which I know I'm not supposed to do, but I'm going to read the whole story for full effect. Okay. And then I'm we're going to strategize. Okay. That's what we're going to do. Ooh, strategy. Um, of course, if you are watching this on YouTube and you have not subscribed to us yet, we are so close to 233,000 subscribers. Please, if 
You were part of the people. Just check your subs. Maybe you're not subscribed to us anymore because sometimes YouTube does that thing where it just unsubscribes Why you. Why is everybody complaining all the time? Look at this. Wait, is, it, on, is, this is this the steak lawyer? The show's been on two seconds. I hear you complaining we didn't even have to come in today. We should be out there in the sun. I got the grill ready to go. I got these buttes from Omaha Steaks ready to go. They happen to be sponsored. Get today. these in here. Get these in here. Let's let's show the this people. Isn't, this isn't. Right, can we get can we get Sky Cam here? Oh, no, everything else is broken. <laughs> no, no, that. Get, there it is. Ooh, look at, that. Look at these babies. I'm gonna put them. I'm I defrosting them. I got them seasoned. I'm gonna wrap them in the thing. Put them in there. Get them all nice and good. It'll be great. This I just want to eat meat <laughs> with you all day, sir. You're gonna. That's all You're I want to do. I'm gonna go to the store later because Cool Greg has to run the shows. I'm gonna go to the store later. Maybe get us a few beverages. <gasps> some um, some no, no. What do you want? Dos Equis. Can you give me some Pacifico? Yeah, I get you some Pacifico. Sure. Cool Greg, can you roll with Pacifico here and there? I'm so excited about this. That's what I hear. <laughs> That's what I hear. Cool Greg's so excited that he just can't hide it. I'm gonna wear this during the. Uh, I liked it. Oh, I didn't Thank know it you. had a little case on the back. Oh yeah, this is uh, this is a, a. That's pro. A random gift from big old Jamie Kennedy. No, oh, I love it. Yeah. Oh, Jamie Kennedy. I'm all set. Uh, number one, I enjoy the Save by the Bell reference. Number two, did you see me up and down in LA? They have a pop up. That's the yes. Best. We should go over there for Cindy, where I was telling them I'm going. You gotta give me all information. It's still running during E3, so we can go. <gasps> okay. What is the pop up? I missed it's that. The it's the Max. Oh, really? Yeah. Is that the it place they used to hang cool. out? Yeah. yeah. For whatever reason, I wanted to say, I was gonna say the Peach Pit, but that is not. That is not a 210. Like if they if they somehow That's combined cool. the Max, and does it look like the Max? Does it's it have like super the cool. entrance oh, yeah. and you go down? And I love here, it. All right, cool. Does she know we're barbecuing yet? Oh yeah. Cool. Is she gonna stick around for it? I can send this to. Because we partied on Friday. What's up? I can send this to Cool Greg, but it's the Max thing. Oh yeah, oh my god. Please, let's pull that up, Cool Greg. Greg, and when you have a second. I'm gonna slack it to you. Slack it to him. Um, but uh, it looks really cool. Uh, anyway, long story short, if you have been unsubscribed to our channel, I'm sorry about that. Apparently, you know, that was a thing a while back. Double check, because I want you guys to get this content whenever you want. Make sure you hit that bell notification. I'm not sure if that does anything anymore, but if it does, cool. If not, please subscribe to the channel. We're so close to 233. I'd like to break that today. Yeah. We're like 50 people away. It is. We're 50 people away. Yeah, last time I checked, we might have we might have broken it already because I know everyone out there that's watching right now is like, fuck it, I'll go finally and subscribe to your dumbass channel. Uh, let's see where we are. Where are we? Where are we? Come on, come on, internet, keep up, keep up, internet. Oh no. Oh, there we uh, go. Uh, uh, oh, we hit it. Two. 133,000 subscribers on the dot. Exactly. Holy crap, I'm, I'm, I'm screen capping that for sure. That's super fun. I, I screen cap things sometimes and then uh -huh. they sit on my desktop until I clear my desktop off. Uh, yeah, I did and that on I, Friday. I just, I don't care. And I had a lot of things that I don't use for anything. I'm excited about that. Uh, I want to apologize to everyone for the uh, Friday's episode uh, which is the first time I've ever seen this happen. Evidently, it got banned in a bunch of countries. Really? Yeah, the, uh, we watched that Deadly Class trailer. Oh. And it, it literally, it wasn't even a claim. It was a straight up ban. Like, we weren't allowed to show it in 248 countries. So that episode's at like 5,000 views while the rest of them are at like 10. Whoops. I know. What are you gonna do? Deadly Class, don't you want people to see the I don't trailer? think it's that, I think it's a rights issue. Oh. I don't think it's Deadly Class per se. I think when they put the trailer up, they only want to show it in specific areas because I don't know if that trailer is oh, available in other oh. countries. So you know, like I, I think it's one of those things. I guarantee countries. the Sorry. producers of Deadly Class and the people, the good people <laughs> over at Sci-Fi are probably like, "No, get the word out. We want, we want you to talk to about this. this." Yeah, it's just that's the first time I've ever seen that happen, and unfortunately, we caught it a little bit too late uh, because the episode already went up uh, for a couple days, and now I can't bring myself to yank it down and recut it. Um, so basically, you're if you want. Uh, to watch Friday's episode where we talked about the Boba Fett movie and whether or not we are excited for it, uh, here are your options. One, move to the United States. I recommend the West Coast, best coast. Two, call someone you know in the United States, have them FaceTime you, and then just have them watch. You can, you can, can, They can just play the video for you over FaceTime. Those are my two suggestions for you. That works. I apologize for that. Uh, we'll never watch another Deadly Class thing again. Sci-Fi, if you're watching, I'm sorry. I don't want to start a beef with you. We're, right now, we are, we are spreading our efforts in far too many ways. CJ uh, says you can watch it on Twitch still. Can you still watch it on Twitch? You can still watch it on Twitch. Twitch archives. But that doesn't get us views, so don't watch it there. Uh, unless you want to watch it. If you actually want to do anything, go to, go to uh, you want to hear us at least, go to iTunes and you guys can check it out there and subscribe to us over there as well. Um, was I going to go with that? I don't know. I'm going to get the really chat matter. in here. Pull up the chat. You have, you have the chat right there. I know, but for you. I have it. Oh, well, never mind then. I don't need this thing. 
I don't use this thing. The chat's too small. It doesn't matter to me. I have it here. I have it in not night mode. Why don't you like night mode? Because it's not the default setting, Joe. Do you understand me? Yeah. I'm a default guy. I, I have friends who are super into modding out cars, and I just think to myself, that's not how the, the, the retailer of that car, the manufacturer of that car, yeah. wanted that car to go. I watch a lot of modification shows where they take in these nice Lamborghinis and they cut them up and they put all sorts of ugly ass shit on them. Yeah. And I'm like, a designer got paid a lot of money, an artist got paid a lot of money uh -huh. to make this car and you think you know better. You're gonna put some ugly ass fucking rims on this car and you're gonna destroy it. That's like, hey, you know what? We have the statue of David. You know what we should do to him? We should put frog legs on that motherfucker. Let's paint it yellow, just half yellow. Put some, no, motherfucker. You don't mess with perfection. You don't know yeah, you don't mess with perfection. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. That's the, the art is how they wanted it to be, rolling off. I don't know that the good people at Twitch necessarily thought that the gray background for their chat was art. <laughs> it's art. Art. Uh, oh. Bring this up, Cool Greg. I want to see what this looks like. I sent you another link that might show better? more pictures. Yeah. So this is, uh, this is the Max. This is the Saved by the Bell Max pop-up. Wow. Damn. It looks pretty close. Yeah. The entrance is off in the wrong spot. Because it's supposed to be in the middle. It's supposed to be in the middle. I wonder if they play all the cheesy music for, that like was in the background. I want here's it. here's what I would do. Oh yeah, oh, yeah let's Save go. Max. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, scroll down on this. Do so we get more photos of this? I know it's a yeah. it's an interesting website. They're doing this. It doesn't make your content anymore. And then I've, I heard the food is actually like decently good. Go to photos. Oh, I love this. The, the 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 Zachary Dacary. I'm, I'm so, so excited. excited. Oh my god, that's just that's a, that was a sad episode, guys. We shouldn't be making I'm fun so of that. She had an addiction scared. to pills. She had a pill, yes. she was a pill addict. I love all the Opiates. bright colors of these. And then yeah, if you scroll through the pictures to the right and the left. I love the 90s. They really didn't try too hard um, with the design of the logos back then. They just kind of And they had like a recreated out. Mr. Belding's office that you can go sit in with wow. like the desk and everything. Let me go back. I mean, go to the photos. Go to actual photos. Click These on are photos. the photos. But click on photos. It just takes you. Oh, those. Okay, we're just there. Okay. Well, these are just photos to save by the bell. But all of the like every other one is what the place actually. Oh looks my god! Like. Wait, go back. So that's that's the place. This yeah. must be the real place. Yeah. This is fascinating. It's amazing. It's like Mel's Diner for the new generation. Yeah. You know, but God, that's so much. It's so much neon in there. It's fascinating it. because to me that look right there screams 80s, but this must have been early 90s. I, I think it when... was late 80s, early 90s. God, dude, we go back to that look real quick. Go back one one picture, please. Whenever you see a picture of this man, um, you have to we have to linger on it for a little bit because uh, uh, Mark Paul Gosler is a god. Yeah. Um, MPG, baby. Have you ever watched the show that Funny or Die does called Zach Morris is Trash? Uh, no. <laughs> it's super funny. Is it funny? And it just like cuts down random episodes of Saved by the Bell and being like, now that we think about it, like this is a really shitty thing that he did. Oh, he was a big piece of shit. <clears throat> but that was the point. He wasn't yeah. like, he wasn't supposed to be, his moral integrity wasn't exactly all there, but he was but, supposed like, to be But like he was learning. suave enough to like, well, he was to good looking, he was too. charming, but he was also kind of a piece of shit. Yeah. And he was dating Kelly Kapowski yeah. and she was gorgeous. And so there's just lots of stuff, you know. What's up with, that? What's up with what? The Red Bull. Oh, I don't know. Someone must have comped that in. Yeah. I don't, I don't think know. Red Bull was a thing back then. I don't think so either. Is that Brian Altano at the bottom left? Like bottom? <laughs> Looks a little like Altano, huh? Yeah. Bougie. I love it. Oh. Beer underscore me 83 said I wrote fanfic about Kelly Kapowski. <laughs> I, I wrote a lot of fanfic in my brain about Kelly Kapowski when I was in my formative years, mm. ladies and gentlemen. Growing up as a young boy and seeing uh, Tiffany, she dropped the amber, right? Now it's just Tiffany Thiessen. Yeah, no more Tiffany Amber. Uh, and then shout out uh, to Suits. She popped up on Suits and was great in that. Did she? No, not Suits. Excuse me, White Collar. Oh. White Collar. She was on Suits. I, I they were they were the same network. I think yeah. they were all TNT. But she was um, she played the FBI agent's wife. Hmm. Uh, and I remember thinking I saw her name pop up and it was Tiffany Thiessen. I was like, that's interesting. There's another actor named Ac T yeah. Tiffany Thiessen. And then I read a whole thing about how she dropped the Amber because it just she was like, look. Tiffany Amber Thiessen, I used that name when I was a kid, younger, and yeah. I just don't no, need that anymore. I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm just doing my, my thing. Yeah. God bless her for it. Shout out to the first couple seasons of White Collar. I really liked that show. I don't know that I ever watched that. It's good. It's about a, um, a guy. It's sort of like Catch Me If You Can style. Hmm, okay. It's about an FBI agent's relationship with a, uh, a, like a master forger. 
hmm. and a master, like basically master art forger. Yeah. And how he arrested him a couple times, and now the guy works for the FBI, but you never really know if he's kind of working you yeah. or working the FBI, and they have kind of a tenuous, like a, 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 a tenuous relationship. It's a fun show. Um, Suits season one was also fun. Want shout out to our queen, Meghan Markle. Amen. Amen. She's Only season mad. one? How do we start that? Are they calling her the American Queen yet? Because they should. Uh, I think they call... Well, no, it's not America's Princess. That was Diana, right? I don't know. I mean, she is definitely American. Well, she's well, a... she wasn't American. Uh, she's Diana. the American Duchess now. Yeah. She's a Duchess now. But I want to call her the American Queen, Meghan Markle. She's not the... <laughs> she's not going to be the Queen. We don't have a Queen here. We don't have a... We don't have a... Uh, a royal family here. Yeah, we don't. So we, now we do. We have the Merkles. Oh, Grace Kelly was America's Princess. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, Diana was... Uh, she was... was it? She was the Princess of Wales, right? Yeah. But she will... Was she a commoner or was she actual royalty? I don't remember. My mom's going to be very upset with me. I, that I feel like she this. was a commoner. I feel like that was the big kerfuffle, right? Wasn't that why that and her actually having an opinion on Matt, on things, wasn't that why the queen was like, hey, you, you can't do that. We're not about so. having opinions here. We're just about wearing funny hats yeah. that look like uh, meat trays. And what? all that stuff. I don't know. You said there's some guy tweeted at me like a picture of one of the hats because I was making fun of the hats from the <laughs> ceremony, and he tweeted me a picture of a hat, but he, someone had composited a uh, a Costco meat tray, meat and cheese tray on it. I was like, "Yep, that makes sense. That the makes a whole lot of sense." The People's Princess. The People's Thank Princess. You. Not to be confused with the People's Elbow. No. Which is a move uh, by The Rock, right? Hook 'em horns. The Rock. Cool, Greg. All right. <laughs> Is that what he does? No. No, what is the rock? What's the rocks? The eyebrow. No, I know that, but wasn't didn't he go to Texas? Wasn't he did, what, doesn't he have the Brahma Bowl on his thing? Oh, he does have that, but he doesn't do this. He doesn't do this? He doesn't do the sign of the devil? No. This is Hook'em Horns, right? This is the sign of the devil. That That's guy? quiet coyote. One of those one of these is the devil. I don't is it? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Chat a little bit. Some antics. Some antics. I'm always down for some antics. Uh, all right, everyone. Let's go into quickly into housekeeping. Let's see if the graphic's working. Housekeeping. I, can I try something? Try it. <gasps> housekeeping, housekeeping, housekeeping. Benny, that was even better. <laughs> cool Greg came to me today. He was like, I don't know if I get the graphics to work, the computer reset. Evidently, the graphics themselves have taken a day off. Oh. But even better. That's fun. We now, you got to find another one for the news, by the way. Uh, so you better you better bring up another <laughs> Jetson. You got... You got what was the Jetsons' maiden name? Slave Robot. Slave robot, slave. robot. The Jetsons was weird, man. I the I was, Jetsons and the Flintstones were both weird. The thing about the Jetsons that freaked me out mm -hmm. was that I always, always had a base level of anxiety watching the Jetsons. You ask That's yourself why, and here's the answer to that: What uh -huh. if they fall <laughs> from space? <laughs> no, they were in the sky. They lived in the sky. But. Yeah. On these giant things with like stilts, and the stilt just held it like I was like, "What if you just slip and fall?" I don't. You're gonna fucking die. I think Elroy would have you... died. Is that the dog? No, that's Elroy's the boy. boy. My boy Elroy. And what was this dog's name? They're, I don't fucking know this anymore. We so gotta look cute. this up. Um, I love this show. Yeah. The show goes off the rails before it even gets on the rails. But you would Jetsons. think that if they have the technology to build these space sky homes, whatever they are. Mm -hmm. That they would have figured out the falling thing. Well, they had like jetpacks and stuff they put on you, but I always just thought, like, what if you got a little, you're having a bad day, right? Yeah, and, and you're you just look not over attention. and you see that bottle. Mm. Mm. And you've stayed away from the bottle for a real long time because you know the bottle is the end of your family, you know? Oh, you, wow. got, you got a family, this you is got a, a dark good job. Turn for the you, don't, you, don't want, you don't want to ruin it like the first time around. You know, my gosh, this is, is second, this, this back is lore family. for the Jetsons? Okay, but it's been a bad day. Okay. You work at Mr. Sprocket, he's fucking with you at the Sprocket factory, right? Uh -huh. And maybe, maybe you got a little, you fucking gave him the backhand and he's like, that's it, George. You're fired today, right? And that wow. bottle says, hey, I'm your only real friend. Uh -huh. Okay, me and the pack of cigarettes next to you, we're gonna have a great fucking time. A menage a trois of sorts, a threesome, okay? And you hit that bottle real hard and you're just uh -huh. looking over the edge and you're just thinking to yourself, what if I, fa and then you slip. It's not your fault, but maybe subconsciously you wanted to end it all, and you slip over the edge and you die. Where do you go? Where Down. Do you go? Exactly. So as a kid, I always thought to myself, what if, I mean, I'm a stupid, I'm a kid, I bump into shit. What if I fucking trap door, bumped into one of the trap doors or whatever, and I just plummeted to my death? What's down there? Also, what's down there? Okay? Who lives on the surface? Are they fucking You're mole a lot people? Of good questions that They're, I don't have the answer. It's terrifying. To. <laughs> what what is life on the surface like, right? Because there's I forget what sci-fi show. Maybe I think it was like um, what was the one with uh, Nathan Fillion, Firefly. I want to mm -hmm. say there was like an episode of Firefly, or maybe it was 
what show am I thinking where like the gods or like the better people lived up there and all the shitty people lived down below? I have no idea. Shit. I want to say it was either a, Not it lost. was like Star Trek. Chat, let me know what I'm thinking right now. Battlestar Galactica. No. That was a great show also, but then thank you for saying that name, but that's not what I'm thinking of. It was, it might have been an episode of the old Star Elysium? Trek show. Fifth Element. No, it might have been actually an episode That's a Star of, Trek episode. It was a Star Trek. It was an original Star Trek episode where, like, the, the smart people and the gods and the technologically advanced lived up there and the cave people lived on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And they always were, like, they were fucking with them always because, like, the cave people had to mine all the ore and shit for the, for the sky people. Was it, like, their, like, form of entertainment? No, I don't remember that. I just think they were, like, you're dumb and you live on the surface so we're going to mm -hmm. subjugate you and enslave and, and you. And the slave people were, like, we're not that dumb and we're going to fuck you up because we're all strong and sexy. Mm -hmm. We're all like the intellect people were like skinny and the strong sexy people were like we're at some point You fuck with me. I'm gonna wrestle you to the ground break your fucking elbow. Wow. Just snap that shit. I Don't know let's look going back and looking uh, it was who are the Jefferson characters George Jetson not Jefferson Jane Jetson all of the Jeffersons was fucking <coughs> too. Jane Jetson Judy was the kid Elroy was the son Rosie was mm, the, the robot and Astro Rosie. was the, uh, the, the Scooby-Doo ripoff the cute dog Scooby Doo rip off. The Clearly, dog. they were like, we're going to rip this guy off. That's totally fine. Really? But he wasn't. I guess he is. <laughs> I guess he is kind Astro of. Astro was a freaking rip off. But he wasn't the main character, so it wasn't like a show about him. No, but he, he was kind of a talking dog, man. I got to go back and watch The Jetsons again. I wonder if it's streaming anywhere. Maybe. Probably. It's probably one of those like Twitch channels that's just streaming every episode of the Jetsons. Oh, that'd be dope. That'd be really Twitch, fun. get on that. Maybe let's put we'll we'll find a we'll find a stream and we'll put it on for barbecue and we'll just watch endless episodes <laughs> of the Jetsons. Uh, all right, ladies and gentlemen, housekeeping time. Cool Greg, bring this up. Uh, prom tickets on sale. We had a great stream on Friday. I'm not okay. sure if we accomplished anything, but boy, some of us got drunk. And by some of us, I mean everyone but me got drunk. That's a correct statement. Yeah. We did that fun prom game. I didn't get laid. None, None of, us of us got did. laid. And that sucks. Yeah. So never play Monster Prom ever again because it's just it was exactly our first like time. My, 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 the other two proms that I went to. But it was our first time. It was our first time. It doesn't always work out the way you want it to. It generally does not. Ever. If I know one thing, it's trying to have sex with someone uh -huh. or trying to get sex from other people generally never works out the way <laughs> I thought it would. Sometimes it works out, just not the way I thought it would. Yeah. Uh, cool, Greg. Next piece of housekeeping news. What do we have what going we got? on? Yeah, here? boy. Clusterfest <laughs> this weekend. San Francisco, California, baby. We're very excited about this. Uh, it's June 1st through the 3rd. Uh, three days of awesome comics. Amy Schumer's going to be there. John Stewart's going to be there. John Mulaney's going to be there. Uh, Greg and myself will be there. If you're asking yourself, Nick, are you performing? No, I'm not that good. But... I'm going to go, and I'm going to see the show. I'm very excited about that. The good people over at Clusterfest uh, are, have invited me and Greg to go watch the show. So we want you guys to come there, too, uh, and have a very, very good time. You can go do... <gasps> Salt and Pepper? What happened? Oh, I thought something broke. No. I just got really excited. Salt and Pepper's going to be there. If you scroll down, let's see. Who's there on Friday? The Lonely Island Boys are going to be there. That's awesome. Ooh. The Lonely Island. Amy Schumer's there on Jordan Saturday. Noah. John Stewart's there on Sunday. Wu-Tang Clan. David Cross. Can I get a ticket? No. Yeah, you can get a ticket. We'll get you a ticket. We'll try to figure that out. Bert Kreischer? Burt Kreischer. Oh, wait, wait. When's Burt Kreischer there? On Sunday. He's very, very funny. I saw him at whatever comedy club is in Irvine. Uh, the, the Irvine Spectrum. Improv, probably. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's only one in Irvine. Uh, yeah, this is a great lineup, so definitely go check that out. We'll be reminding everyone all week uh, because Clusterfest. Jesus is... and Mero are going to come here, bruh. I don't know. Those are my is. guys, man. Who? Jesus and Mero. What, what day? What day am I, I looking at? podcast every day, man. That's on Saturday. Saturday, what does he see? Jesus and Romero. <laughs> Third line all the way to the right. Third line. Third left, the... sorry. Yeah. Jesus. Oh, and Jesus Mar and Romero. I thought you said Jesus and Romero. I was like, I don't know who those people are. What kind of podcast does Jesus and Romero do? Aquafina? Uh, they just react to so like, kind of like what we do, but more of like hip hop. But better. Mm. Yeah, that's understandable. Drunk History and Friends, that's awesome. Salt, I, the fact that Salt and Pepper is going to be there just makes me. That's very awesome. excited for Saturday. Yeah. So I believe I'm going, uh, I might try to go every day, depending on the passes that we get. But I'm excited about this. This That'd is be cool. Really fun. This is my first time. I saw Cluster Fest happening last year, and it was one of the things that, like, quasi inspired me as I was, as I was starting doing comedy. I was like, what a cool thing to be able to do yeah. in our backyard. Like, that's a great hashtag it's life a, goal for yeah. me. Yeah. Because if I could even, like, fill in some of the 
just open for people, that would be super fun. Yeah. But obviously that's years away. We'll see what happens there. Trevor Noah's gonna be there also, it's great. And John Mulaney, one of Tim's faves. Faves. Really? I didn't yeah. know that. Uh, all right, next piece of housekeeping news. Um, is this housekeeping? No, that's not housekeeping, that's that's news. Regular um, news. Last thing, I forgot to put a link to this, but we are continuing our in review series. If you guys are not here, if you didn't watch our solo review, uh, we are doing X-Men next. We're starting with a 2000, that's right, it was 18 years ago, movie Dang. that came out in 2000. That's even. crazy. X-Men, starring one Hugh Jackman, one James Marsden, one Famke Janssen, and Patrick Stewart. Uh, and I'll tell you, I went back and watched that this two weekends ago, because mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I don't understand how calendars work, and I totally thought we were doing it last week. Yeah. Ooh, we got a lot to talk about. I'm this is gonna excited. be a fun one. So if you guys want to keep up, you got to watch it this week. We are changing when the show posts, though. It will post Thursday, 9 a.m. from here on out. Unless it is a normal movie review where we just go and see, like, something that doesn't fit chronologically, in which case that'll just happen when it happens. Usually Thursday, midnight, or whatever the heck, whenever the yeah. heck we get it up. Cool. Um, all right. Uh, quick reminder, if you guys want to give us a tip, Tip, well, the, uh, the stream tip uh, went out of business. But I think I fixed it. But I think, Joey thinks she fixed it. So go ahead and uh, tip. We will hopefully read those. Uh, if not, we'll try to we'll try to get to them tomorrow once we figure out the system. Bear with us yeah. on that. Of course, if you guys want, you can give us bits. Those still work. And if nothing else, uh, if you're like, you know what, I just I want to give you guys something a little bit more permanent. Uh, well, there are two ways to do that. One, if you have Amazon Prime, you get one free Twitch Prime subscription. You give that to us. That lasts a month. Or Ooh. if you want it to last a little longer, go over to Patreon.com. And you can support us at the $1, $2, $5, $10, any level you see fit. Uh, you get all sorts of cool perks over there. Uh, namely, if you support us at the $2, you get entered into win our giveaway that happens every day. But you also get to watch all the shows live as they're happening and be a part of the pre and post show. All right. I've spieled enough on this show. That was a lot of spieling. It's a lot of spieling. Uh, but I'm very excited for X-Men. So. Slash 19, nope, 19887 says Deadpool film counts for review too. Yeah, uh, we will be going through Deadpool again, one and yeah. two. So we've already done the review of Deadpool. We are going to go back and do put that in the in-review format, if that yeah. makes sense. So we'll be doing, that's right, all the things you love, uh, including Ragu Bagu, uh, drink those ads, and we will talk about the wig spiracy and uh, the current state of the wig spiracy in Hollywood. Oh, wow. Yeah. I don't want to do the wig thing anymore. <laughs> I don't want to be wigging out necessarily, but I do want to bring attention Okay. To the fact that the wig, big wig, is uh, is is gaining power. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if we don't stop them, they're going to turn into big pharma. They're going to turn into big tobacco. Wow. Do you understand me? They've got a huge. Trajectory They've got a ahead tremendous amount. If you if you think the NRA is bad, wait until you walk around and all of a sudden people get to drive by wigging, where you just go what, and then you look up and there's a wig on your head. Okay. Or when people start shaving their heads just because they're you know. It's not what it used to look like when they were 25 and they start having to put wigs on their heads. Wow. I'm just saying. You don't want to live in that future. That's not a future, Joey T, that you want to live in. And that's your new I mean, I kind of want to see it, though. I kind of do want to just, like, see it and then come back. You're sick. You're sick. <laughs> and now that you're pitching it to me like that, it actually does sound pretty fun <laughs> to just have everyone wear wigs one day. Yeah. How come there's not a national wig and out day? Uh, I don't know. Nobody knows. I think that we could start it, though. I think we could. How, how do you like, okay, so people, by the way, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Greg's been trying to get Joester yeah. started. How do you feel about Joey T? I think that's cooler. It's fine. Joey T. Cool, Greg, say it again. It's not really a nickname so much as it's just my name. <laughs> it's cool. Chat, let me know what you think of Joey <laughs> T. Before, while we get into that, uh, let's go into the news. News, 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 news. <laughs> yep. I'll be honest with you guys right now. That's better than the graphics. AJ, I love you. You're awesome, but you're you're fired. Yeah. You are fired. Uh, top news story. The solo numbers are in and not looking good, Joe. Yeah. Not that's looking good. That's what I've good. heard. I've kept eyes on this over the weekend. Uh, it, they were assuming it would do a little bit better than this, given that it was you know it's a four day holiday holiday weekend. Yeah. Um, but people are saying that uh, it's falling very short of their projections. I pulled this story from The Hollywood Reporter. I said over the weekend, um, Memorial Day weekend, 
Solo, a Star Wars story, uh, battled hard to hit 103 million domestically and bombed overseas with 65, only bringing in 65 million. Uh, the film badly trailed the launch of fellow standalone pick Rogue One, a Star Wars story, which debuted at 155 million domestically in 2016 on its way to topping 1.056 billion globally. At its current rate, Solo may not gross more than 400 million in all. After costing nearly to, uh, purportedly 250, some sites say even as close to 300 million uh, with the reshoots that they had to do. Mm. So, this is the first time. Now, to put it in context, uh, there's a couple other people who were talking about how Justice League and Batman v Superman were were declining downward, but those movies still totally uh, cost the same, close, close to the same as this, but still ended up getting 700 to 800 mil, uh, million dollars worth of gross. So is that with like not overseas a, box office? Yeah, I mean that's, that's that's global box office total, yeah. and of course they go on to do more uh, when it comes to the rental market. But this is just the, the milestone that we're using here. So mm-hmm. while they thought Justice League was ho- was hoping to, you know, when they wanted Batman v Superman and Justice League top a billion, they still are profitable films. They're just not knocks out of the park. This might be the first major picture of this caliber. Of a Disney slash uh, Lucas Arts or Lucas Film, excuse me, yeah. uh, movie that might actually be a bomb. That's not like crazy. not a hey, it didn't do well, but it still made the shareholders some money. Like yeah. if this only grosses four hundred million dollars and it costs three hundred million dollars to make, that's a big problem. That's a big bomb. Which is crazy because it's still made money, but I guess it I just did, don't understand the. But they had to market like when they yeah. talk about production budgets, they don't include marketing. Ah, so they always talk sense. about how, oh, it had a $250 million budget. But you would assume, oh, okay, so the movie cost $200 million to make or $150 million to make and then they made another, put another $100 million in marketing. That's not necessarily the case. Sometimes mm. they double, like they'll, they'll, they'll spend more than the production budget depending on how much they think they want to get the word out. Um, and that doesn't account for the actual production budget. So it's all really murky. You yeah. never really know because no one, there's no governing body that says you have to report mm-hmm. how much money you've spent. And yeah, to, to be perfectly honest, money. studios probably don't have a, a, a realistic like, hey, here's the bottom line on this yeah. because productions are productions. And then marketing budget, you know, they might Those throw change. a fastball, but like, let's fucking go hard on this because yeah. it's, it's doing really well or let's back it off because this is going to be a stinker. Um, but this is interesting. I never thought, I didn't think we'd get here this early. Yeah, I didn't think it would happen with something, A, that's like a character that's super well-known and loved through Star Wars lore. Like, I thought this would maybe happen if, like, they did a second Han Solo movie where people were like, okay, we've done this once, so we know what we're getting, we don't necessarily need a second one. Um, so it's interesting that it's happening with, like, a origin story. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I think there's a number of factors play in here. Yeah. One, obviously, uh, The Last Jedi came out six months ago. Yeah, it's so, a lot of Star Wars. But I don't buy Star Wars fatigue because Marvel movies so. come out once every like week now. That's true. And we still get hyped for that. I don't buy that this is Star Wars fatigue and I don't buy, I do buy a little bit that there is a sentiment uh, of people like myself who were not tremendously excited for this. Yeah. Having said that, if the preview had been amazing, maybe it would have gotten me back in. Yeah. If the preview had had anything any standout moment in it that got me really hyped, I would, I mean, granted I went and saw it, so it's kind of a horrible example that I'm using right now. But what I'm saying is, I honestly think the movie just didn't preview very well. I think yeah. that the trailers that came out and the overall hype just failed completely to generate hype. And I think a lot of that stems from the fact that there's no wow moments in the trailer, you know? Yeah. There's no chewy, we're home. There's mm-hmm. no, this is a special moment. thing. Yeah. What I think this trailer did for me was it smacked with this is going to be kind of a cool, fun story. Yeah. And that's going to be it. And I think that the the, the problem with having movies that aren't uh, a part of the main trilogy is that they do feel on some level disposable to me. They don't like feel like they Rogue matter One? as much. Rogue One was cool and I think it did well because it was a what if scenario of like yeah. what is this going to be? This, there's a curiosity factor of like is this going to crash and burn? I think with Solo... I think it is that combination of like, eh, I'll get to that later. I don't yeah. have to rush out to theaters to see this because it's not part of the main trilogy and we're just going to keep getting more and more of this. Mm-hmm. That's at least my thing. Also, it, word of mouth was people saw it, came out and said, it's okay. Yeah. Myself included. I went and saw it. I was like, you know, it's a movie. Yeah. You know, I don't, I didn't hate it per se. I think there was I a wider there was thing. I fun moments of it, but. I think there was more people that I saw online this weekend that were like, I had a lot of fun with it and it was better than I thought it would be. I saw but a lot of people say that too. that's not necessarily 
a great like a great review. Of but that, but see, that, I it would be. that that is the general sentiment. And again, I think that's playing half off the fact that people are have been complaining about it. But then yeah. all the other half that like I just think there was an expectation that this wasn't going to be necessarily the best Star Wars movie ever made. Yeah, I think that. Uh, changing directors midway f- was a big sign to a lot of people like, hey, there's mm. something might be off. And I don't know if the psychological ramifications of that are like, hey, if I tell you I'm I'm firing a director and bringing someone else in to triage this, does that automatically flip a switch that you're like, oh, I'm expecting this to be bad? Yeah. To me, it did, unfortunately. To me, I'm like, I, w- I know Ron Howard's a very capable director, but there's only so much you can do, right? We okay. saw Joss Whedon come in and take over for uh, Zack Snyder for Justice League. And there's only so much he could have done at that point because yeah. scripts are written, scenes can only be reshot so many times, budgetarily speaking. Um, so I don't know, you know? And I also think that this was just... It just felt a little like, hey, we're capitalizing off of Star Wars now. Instead of doing something new and unique like with Rogue One where I really felt like this was a whole new host of characters that we can sink our teeth into, yeah. we're, we're back on... Territory we've run over multiple times, and I just yeah I don't know. And the crazy thing is, he's uh, Alden I- I- Ehrenreich is uh, scheduled. He signed for like two more. He signed for two more movies, so it'll be interesting to see if he just pops up in other movies as Han, or if they're gonna make if they're gonna continue this movie with a couple more and make kind of a trilogy out of it. Because I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if they did that. I guess the other question too is, did anybody really want a solo movie? Because I feel like. I saw. I mean, a lot I didn't. More I didn't not want a solo movie. And, yeah. here, and here, and here's where I have to. I have to watch myself, <laughs> because I don't want to be super revisionist about this, right? I don't want to go back and say, okay, because the movie was bad, we should never have had a solo movie. Yeah. I obviously think where there's a will, there's a way. If you told me, do you want an Ant Man movie? I'd tell you to go fuck yourself. <laughs> no, I don't want an Ant Man yeah. movie. But you cast Paul Rudd as Ant Man, and you're like, oh, and okay. You, uh, okay. You know, suddenly do I'm clamoring for Ant Man and the Wasp. Do you think if they would have cast somebody that was a little bit more well known? Or is this too much of like an iconic role that whoever you're going to put into it is kind of just these are questions SLO. for people that have a much bigger pay grade <laughs> than me. Although, so so here's my thought on it, right? And this mm-hmm. is I, I I I've had some time to digest this. I think he's a great. I think he's a good actor. Yeah. Um, I think he did. What else has he been in? He was in a Coen Brothers movie uh, with George Clooney about like Hollywood, like old timey Hollywood. He hasn't done that much that I remember. Chad will let us know. Um, I don't think he's a bad actor. I just, he didn't click for me as the role. He didn't, he didn't capture what I needed him to capture. He didn't really drag me in as Han Solo. Mm-hmm. Um, Hail Caesar. That's Hail Caesar, that's what he was. He was great in that because he played like this like Hollywood studio actor who was just like along for the ride. <laughs> um, not, a, not a great movie, Hail Caesar, though. Not my, well, good movie, not my favorite of the Coen Brothers uh, Got it. offerings. Um, but I was watching over the weekend, I was watching uh, a movie called Eddie the Eagle. Okay. which is a smaller movie that came out with Hugh Jackman and Taron Egerton. Now, if you don't know Taron Egerton, he, I think I'm saying his name right, uh, he was the guy from um, <coughs> Kingsman. Oh. I guy? love him. And I thought to myself, I was thinking to myself, I'm like, if I were to cast this movie, he would have been my go-to. Hmm. Because he just has that likability, yeah. that cocky likability in Kingsman that I think he could have brought to this. Which is a Han Solo totally thing. It's just that like, I wanna, it's it's that fine line between I either wanna punch this guy or be his best friend, (laughs) you know? And granted, if you watch Eight of the Eagle, he's playing a character, that's that's a character film, and he's playing an actual, uh, the movie's based on a real downhill, or excuse me, ski jumper. Mm -hmm. Um, But I just, I'm like, this kid has chops, man. Oh, he's also in Sing. Never mind, I was thinking, What's, I was thinking about the movie that Brian always talks about, Sing Street. Sing Street. Sing, nope, that's the one with the, the anime. Sing was the one with the, the, the yeah, yeah, I don't think, was he in that? <laughs> Apparently. I got really excited, I was like, oh, Sing Street, that's a movie I've been meaning to watch. But nope, that's a little pig movie, never mind, just kidding. Edgerton <sighs> is how it's pronounced, says Spaceman01. Mm. Uh, Taron Edgerton. He's, yeah, he's one of those, uh, he, I just think he's fantastic. But again, I don't know, you plug him into this role, that's the thing, that's, that's what's so hard about making film, is that you have yeah. so many different moving parts and everyone has to bring what they have to the table, and sometimes, you know, it's all subjective. So a lot of people I saw said, hey, I, Solo's one of my favorite Star Wars films, they really liked it. They liked yeah. the fact that it felt like the stakes were a little smaller. They liked the felt that it was, it was it liked the fact that it was building off of nostalgia, largely off of nostalgia. Mm-hmm. To me, I just, there were just a couple elements that were off with it that kept it from being a really, truly fun experience. Yeah. But, I don't know. Anyway, shout out to Eddie the Eagle. Because, <laughs> do you know the story of this? 
Sorry to say, sorry to segue on you here. Okay. Uh, Hugh Jackman's in it. Okay. He's phenomenal. Uh, uh, Tara Edgerton is in it. He's phenomenal. He plays a guy named uh, Eddie Edwards, who is a British, a British bloke, okay. as they say, uh, growing up who always wanted to be uh, in the Olympics for mm-hmm. whatever reason. He just decided, I want to be in the Olympics. I'm going to be in the Olympics. Then he decided, I want to be in the Winter Olympics as a skier. And then when basically the Olympic Committee in England was like, we don't want you to be a part of this because you're kind of, he was a poor, he kind of grew up in a more impoverished yeah. area. And they were like, you don't really represent what we want to represent to the world as England. He figured out a loophole that if he could be um, a long jump skier, you know the ones that go, I don't know what, I don't know if I'm using that term correctly, but the one where they go down the fucking un- yeah. insanely uh, high hill and then just fly. It's not slalom. It's not slalom. Slalom's where they scooch back oh, and forth. This one's when they just jump. Yeah. And then they just go and then they try to land it and get as far as humanly possible. It's like the simplest and most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. Anyway, he figured out that England didn't have one of those. They didn't have a team for that. So all he had to do was enter and do one jump to qualify and he could go to the Olympics. He could fulfill his dream of going Ooh. to the Olympics. But then it brings up the question of like, are you, uh, it reminds me of um, the, uh, the, the half pipe snowboarder from last Winter Olympics. Oh yeah. Who, who realized like, that there weren't enough, enough women in the division and so if she just entered, she could win. Or yeah. she could not win, excuse me, but she could qualify and yeah. compete in the Olympics. And then everyone was like, you're kind of making a mockery out of this because all these other people have trained since birth for this and they really are trying to comp- be competitive. Yeah. But they, but it plays with the theory of like, well, what is the spirit of the Olympics? Is it yeah. to try and fail or is it to have to win by all accounts? Like it's it's mm-hmm. actually a good movie. And, and Hugh Jackman plays his trainer. Um, Interesting. It's fun. It was actually a really cool movie. And there's a great sound cue at the end uh, with Van Halen. That's my favorite thing ever. Love it. Oh, Van Halen. Oh, Mr. Yasmin 300 says, Nick loves uh, the film Eddie the Eagle because Walken is in it. Um, that's definitely not a knock against the film. Fine, sir. Definitely not. Okay. Um, let's see. HCA Eagle 32 says, Nick, was Solo better than The Last Jedi? I have not seen Solo yet, but, it, but did not like The Last Jedi. We brought this up on the review. Um, and I don't know that I need, I would need to go back and watch them both again to see I think Solo was a better, um, sta- like, I think Solo from a, st- a structure standpoint, for me, was worked better uh, because it. Was, I think start to finish, everything felt earned. Everything felt like, okay, this makes sense, what's going on? I just think that the, the one problem Solo had was that it wasn't very exciting. Yeah. I, there just was, there were no part, and this is where I, this is where I, um, have to sort of diverge a little bit because my criticism of the, of the Last Jedi was that a lot of the structure of the story itself didn't make sense to me. They broke a little bit of the logic of why the characters were doing whatever they were doing. Yeah. It just seemed sort the of like were the motivations for what was happening within the characters themselves didn't necessarily have parity with what mm-hmm. they should have been doing with with the overarching story. Yeah. Solo makes sense from start to finish. His motivations are like, I just want to I want to do this one insane. thing so that I can get this other thing. That's yeah. all I want to do, and I'm being drawn into this life because this is all I have. This is my only option, right? Yeah. That sort of makes sense. But where I feel like Solo kind of failed a little bit was where The Last Jedi succeeded is The Last Jedi has wow moments. Yeah, the Last Jedi has that, and this is a spoiler for anyone who's just waiting for all the Star Wars to be over so you can watch them all with us in review. You've seen this already. I'm, being, I'm joking. Had that moment where she fucking rams the ship through the other ship and it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. It was beautiful. That was a that was a transcendent moment for me. Yeah. Don't ask why she did that instead of a droid. Don't ask where that character came from. Don't ask any of these questions leading yeah. before or up to it, but that one beautiful shot had emotion behind it and I thought that was really beautiful. Also, the throne room fight was fucking amazing. Yeah. So, Solo didn't have any of that. It had moments on the train sequence that I thought were cool. Yeah. But for me, there's, there was no wow moment of like, whoa! And the moments that were supposed to stick out, I was like, okay. Yeah. Oh, that character's here now. Okay. Yeah. Andy and I talked about it after you guys all left on Thursday night. He was like, I think this is the first movie, like Star Wars movie, that I'm not like excited to see, or that I don't feel like I need to see again in theaters. Um, And I kind of feel the same way of like, even with The Last Jedi, even though I didn't like love it, I was, I saw it at least one or two more times in theaters. Yeah. And I, and the more that I saw it, or the more that I watched it, the more that I liked it. And this one, I I feel like I categorize my movies between I saw it, I don't ever need to see it again, <laughs> I want to watch it again when it comes out on DVD at some point, yeah. and I want to see it again in theaters. And this definitely falls in the I saw it, I don't think I ever really need to see yeah, it. Yeah, this is one of those where when I walked out of Rogue One, I was like, whoa, that movie built like, to something yeah. really cool at the end and did something really unique. And I have gone back and watched it since, and I think 
it's lost a little bit of its luster just because you kind of know what happens. Yeah. And you're sort of, that story I think is, is faded and you feel it at the beginning. You're like, it's not, not going to turn out too well for these characters. And I think going, I think that first experience is really special. Second experience, you're like, I know where this is going. It's yeah. whatever. But then that last sequence mm -hmm. with Darth Vader is probably one of the coolest things Star Wars has ever done. Yeah. Um, and I just feel like I wanted Solo to have a few of those moments. And there were some surprising moments, and there were some moments that made me laugh out loud. But yeah. ultimately, I was like, I walked out, I was like, okay. Yeah. I ate some popcorn, I had a good time with my friends, and I watched the Star Wars flick. Yeah. You know? There's Whereas only the last one Jedi, thing, I think, th in the entire movie that's spoilable. Yeah. One link. There's one big thing. And that's about it. And that's about it. The rest of it, you know, I walked out of The Last Jedi, um, and I was disappointed because... To me, the, the main trilogy, the main, uh, well, I shouldn't say trilogy, the main nine movies, um, I just feel like it's a missed opportunity to tell a, a story that vibes with me. Yeah. A lot of people like it, a lot of people don't like it. But I just don't, no, I don't love the direction they're taking that in. What I like about Solo, though, is that it doesn't matter. They can go make a Boba Fett movie, it can be a totally different team, and they can get me right back in. Mm, yeah. So we'll see. They can make a Lando movie, they can make an Obi-Wan movie, they can make a one-off story Whatever. We'll see how they finish the nine, and then we'll see what Ryan does with the next three. Yeah. Um, again, I bashed The Last Jedi, and I feel bad for that now. I like Ryan Johnson. I like Brick. Mm -hmm. I like I like some of his earlier stuff. I didn't... Uh, Looper was cool, too. Like, whatever. Yeah. It wasn't my favorite, but I, I love what he did with Brick. Um, I just... It'll be interesting to see what he does with a story that's all his own, that he doesn't have to pay homage to the other characters that are coming up behind yeah. him. Yeah, for sure. All right. Uh, let's see. What's this next news story? Oof. Nade Sticker says, I need that Watto movie. Hell yeah, we do. If they make a Watto movie, for real, <laughs> it could be amazing. <laughs> it's like, it's, it would have to be a deep indie, though. It had nothing to do with Star Wars. He's just stuck on that planet, and he had to become a slave driver because he was a slave. Uh, pull up this next news story, please, Cole Greg. Now. I feel like we talk about this, like, every couple we months. We do, but I love to, to do it. I put this on, forget it. I forgot Kevin wasn't here today. Mm -hmm. Oh, nor is Tim. But, but I have movie pass. Do you have movie pass? Yeah. Well, you might not have it for much longer. This is but according I don't really to CNN care. Media. <laughs> this is from money.cnn.com. Uh, and it says the parent company, Helios, and Matt, we, we reported on this like a, a month ago. Yeah. And there were people who were saying, look, they don't have a ton of cash left in reserve, and their uh, accounts receivable is not that big. Basically, they're spending uh, $21.7 million every month to operate. Uh, and they only have about 15.5 million cash on hand plus another 27.9 million in accounts receivable according to documents filed Tuesday with the US Security and Exchange Commission. So basically they have roughly 43 million dollars uh, what's the what's the math on that? I'm going to do that real quick before I freaking talk out of my butt here. 42.9. Is that 42.9? No, 43.4. Let's see. No, it's 15.5 plus 27.9 equals 43.4 million divided by two. This is how the math they're doing is 21.7 million dollars. And that's how much it costs them to run this every month. So people are theorizing, of course, granted, they could always go and get more around another round of funding and they could do all sorts of things. But they're saying it might be it for Movie Pass. In but the they've next said two this months. for like the last six months, eight months. They have said it for the last six months. And, and uh, the CEO and the governing or the, the owning company has been like, yo, we got plans. We're, we're figuring this out. Yeah. Um, the thing is, they have a tremendous install base now. So you have to think, what are you, you can't let that it? die. Yeah. What's going to happen? <clears throat> but you also have to think that letting people watch a movie a day for $10 a month is not, that something has to change. That system is not going to be. They've started making changes, though, of like, you can only see each movie once now mm -hmm. instead of unlimited amounts of times, which is how it used to be before. Still, but and then the they tried to do it. They tried to go back to where it was only like, what, like six movies a month or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it was four. And now they're back to unlimited or four movies a month. Four movies a month is still a great deal. Don't yeah. get me wrong. Because I but really only ever go on the weekend. This is just this doesn't smack with sustainability. Having said that, I am not a business person, and I'm often wrong, as we've already, as as we all know. Yeah. Um, I've criticized things like Netflix. And I'm like, there's no way Netflix is going to be around forever. Like, yeah. $12 a month, and they're spending billions of dollars every year on, on original programming. Mm -hmm. Well, smarter people than me run that company because it has a market valuation uh, equal to Disney now. Yeah. So, there yeah. you go. Who in the chat? Tagless02 says, well, it was fun while it lasted. That's exactly my viewpoint on it of, like, it was really great while I had it. Will I pay for it again if it's 40 bucks a month? Probably not. 
Well, that's but the thing is if they decide, like, if they say, really look, we, yeah, or look, we need you, they're going to lose half their install base because no one's going to pay more than 10 bucks. Um, you might be able to. Some people will. I would pay 20 but bucks. But I don't think on average right? a lot of people are, 20 bucks, still a good deal. But once yeah. you've paid, the problem is once you've paid 10. Yeah, I'm not going to be like necessarily happy about it, but I don't know that moving it up to 20 would make me cancel it. What about 40? A thousand percent I would cancel. Yeah. Because at that point you go, you're like, you have to, you have to think. Yeah. I see on average, which is silly for me because I love movies, but I don't get out to the theaters that much mm -hmm. unless it's a movie that we are all going to, in which case the company pays for the tickets and we yeah. can't use movie pass for that. So literally the last like five movies I've seen have been through the company. When I go watch a movie by myself, I'm really only watching one a month, maybe two. So it still needs to keep underneath that price point for me to, to give a shit. If it's $24 a month and it's the cost of two tickets, I'm not going to get it. Because I, I want the freedom of seeing whatever movie I want and not having to worry about going to the theater and doing the whole shit. Yeah. I want to be able to just go on Fandango, get the ticket, pay the stupid service fee, and be, call it a day. Yeah. That's what I like. I don't know. Yeah, the the annoying part is like, I would. I feel like I would use it more often if there was like a plan where it's like you get four tickets and you can use them however you want to right because then i would just do like double features for two weekends out of the month yeah so like go saturday go see two movies go skip a week and go the next week and see oh, two i'd movies. love that that would be the best that was a cute and one. i would still pay 20 bucks for that oh uh, dude for the was... flexibility to be able to like stack tickets on the same day heck yeah um w uh, when i was uh earlier in like late in high school early in, in uh, i had friends that worked in movie theaters mm -hmm. and so like my buddy my buddy Scott was a manager at a movie theater, and it was so fun. The best. Because I would just, like, I was, it wasn't like we were gangsters per se, but people just knew not to fuck with me mm. because I was Scott's boy, you know? And yeah. he would be like, yo, what do you want? Like, mid-movie theater, he would just come bring me, like, mid-movie, he'd come bring me popcorn and, like, snacks and shit that he stole. Not stole. Stole. Straight up stole. Can you, I guess popcorn is, like, the weird one in that of, like, they throw away so much popcorn at the end of the night. They know. These, there's a markup on these concessions of like 4,000%. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Here's a really fun story, though. Bring this up. Have you seen uh, the trailer for The Happy Time Murders? It's Melissa McCarthy and a puppet. And it's yeah, basically a hard it's R. it's weird. It looks, the trailer looks bad. Uh, the movie's a great concept. Um, but apparently Sesame Street, Sesame Street is taking a little bit of umbrage with it and now suing them. Hmm. And they're not suing them because they're using a puppet, which is what I first thought. In fact, they're suing them because of some of the promotional material they've put out, including a poster that says, if you scroll down here, cool, Greg, uh, that says, "All ses no sesame, all street. Oh. Okay. Yeah, Which is really hard as nails. Yeah. And actually, again, makes me want to see the movie. Yeah. They kind of got it's me back a, with that's that. That's a great marketing tagline. Yes. Uh, but apparently not great if you don't own the rights to Sesame right. Street. Right. Not great if you're Sesame Street and you don't want blowjob jokes to be synonymous with yeah. your kids' show. Uh, which I believe Sesame Street's still on the air. Are they yeah. still doing Sesame Streets? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Having said that, uh, Melissa McCarthy's one of my favorite comedic actors acting today. I'm really? All happy. Yeah, I fuck, dude, the heat. I do not. Oh I, my God, Bridesmaids. Melissa McCarthy, I don't find funny like at all. I liked Bridesmaids, but I feel like she just gets typecast and I don't, and after watching her in Gilmore Girls, I'm like, she is so, like, she's way more range than what they're casting her the in. The thing is this. Granted, that's what the roles that she's choosing to take. Yeah, because so she's getting paid, that. so how dare you? How fucking dare you? But. Try to cut down someone who's getting paid. Uh, she can do whatever she wants. I just think that she has a more dynamic range than She what definitely she's does. And she's done some, I and mean, she's done other films. She's branched out a little bit. But the yeah. fact of the matter is, her moneymaker is comedy. And I, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you through a little filmology that I like to call some of my top some movies that make me laugh so hard, oh boy. even though I've seen them a hundred times. Spy, okay. Really, it's the it's the Melissa McCarthy Rose Byrne yeah connection. I like Rose Byrne. Um, when it's an ensemble cast and they're great improvers and they and they've got like a Paul Feig there who's like, hey, I'm gonna, let's just give these people some some space to work. Spy got me. Uh, Bridesmaids, I still think is hilarious. Bridesmaids is great. But I could also argue that Bridesmaids, while a comedy, is still a dramatic film, an indie film, and she does a great job in there. Even though she's, but the, she's not. She's she the comedy relief, but she has the most pivotal scene. She has the scene where the main character has so much growth, where she yeah. goes, "Hey, I used to be like you, and I just tried to be better. I, I just got better, you know. Like, and that remember, because that character I think is the is the most fascinating. It's the character that you kind of hate, and everyone hates the beginning." but that ends up being like everyone's favorite character toward the end because you just can't not like her balls to the wall. Like, I'm just gonna keep trying and I'm motivated and I'm gonna try to stay positive and go, I, th I just thought it was great. 
I also, that movie, unfortunately. She's probably me. my least favorite part of that entire movie. Uh, really? Yeah. Oh my god. You, maybe we just have the. It could be. Here's what I, need I to also watch. like adore Gilmore Girls, Melissa McCarthy, which is. I didn't know she was Polar in Gilmore Girls. Yeah, she was Suki. She was uh, Lauren Graham's like best friend. Wasn't she also on Mike and Molly? <clears throat> yeah, but I never watched that. Yeah, I didn't watch that show either. Um, so yeah. like. In, in terms of different roles she could have, that those are polar opposite. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so it could just be that that's all I want. Um, well, I'm just going to give a shout out to a little movie that everyone, sh- people don't like, legitimately yeah. think is a terrible movie, which again makes me question my taste in movies, mm-hmm. and I'm sure Omega Batman will agree with me. Um, a movie called The Heat, with her and Sandra Bullock. <sighs> and oh my God. The first time I saw this movie, I was like, where have you been all my life? I don't know why. Yeah. It is a stupid, run-of-the-mill, cookie-cutter comedy, but their back and forth yeah. is so good. It's so good. Watch it. I recommend it. I don't know. Dude, it gets me every How time. How about instead of that, we just go see Ocean's 8? That's fine. I'm in. Both of them are in it. <laughs> I'm in. I'm a big Sandy Bullock fan, McCarthy by the way. In it? Yeah. I didn't know that. I think she's in it. Uh oh. Hey. And that's it's, it for the show. <laughs> it's uh, it's party day number two, by the way. We're barbecuing and drinking again, I so you know, better put I your party hat on. Do you have so stuff exciting. to do today? Um. Well, I was supposed to go to my friend's pool after this. That's fun. It's like eighty degrees down in the peninsula. Yeah, you can do yeah. both those things. I can. We can get. So we can have some barbecue. Like this. I woke up today. Hi everybody. Hey everyone, it's Andrew Renee. Uh, I woke up today and I was like, this is barbecuing weather. This is ridiculous. This is sacrilege. This is SoCal it's weather. It's a beautiful day. God has San given Francisco us a gift. is never this sunny, you guys. No. It just no. isn't. Especially this time of year. So one of, one of my friends was like, I want to come visit in like July. And I was like, don't. It's so <laughs> cold not. in San Francisco in July. You yeah. would think it would be nice and warm and toasty because it's the middle of summer. Mm-hmm. No. no. It's like 50 degrees, windy and overcast. It's gross. Except for that one day when it's like really hot. And that's what we're getting right now. You get now. the one, the three-day weekend. That's and by insane. really hot, he means 71 degrees. Hey, I grew up in SoCal, so I understand what really hot is. But I'll take <laughs> yeah. what I can get. This is short weather. This is shorts and flip-flop weather. Mm-hmm. And there's a, still a part of me, that grew, a little boy, who grew up in Riverside, California, who loved Twinkies and loved regular soda. But he loved wearing shorts, cargo shorts mostly, and flip-flops even more. It's because okay. Because if you're... Cabs. Cargo shorts were a thing back then. They yes. were. They were. <laughs> we'll Not that. anymore, though. If you're wearing cargo shorts now, so time pockets. to throw those away. People are handy. trying to bring them back. I saw an ad. Um, I think it was on Gap because uh, I was buying some jeans because there are big sales happening this weekend, you guys. Um, and they were advertising how cargo shorts are coming back. And I was like, no. No. They are not coming. You back. have to have a line not somewhere. Not happen. No. Somewhere. We don't there need has those. To be a line. Let me put it this way: whatever's in those extra two pockets, you don't need. No. You're not needing those. No. Um, I came on here because I uh, not only was I like, "Hey, show's almost over," yeah, sorry. but I actually have a question. Yeah. Yes. So I'm working on this little side project. You guys might know something about it, and I need to find out what a good, like, mediocre superpower would be. A mediocre superpower. Yeah. So oh. I'm working on this thing. I can't talk about it yet, but I'm looking for mediocre superpower. a mediocre superpower. Huh. So maybe somebody, somebody in the chat. Somebody in the chat. Here, here's what a good, good one for like, me. Mediocre superpower. Getting your Uber driver to pick you up on the correct side of the street. Ooh, that'd be a great one. Just would be one, literally, if you're like teleportation or just getting your freaking yeah. Uber driver to pick you up on the right <laughs> side of the street would be... I would be like, I don't know, man, because this would be cool once or twice a year, but this is like every day of my life. What about mm. putting USBs in the right way into the thing? Oh, yeah. Mm, that would be a pretty, mm, yeah. that's, that's pretty lame, Joey. You said mediocre. No, I know. <laughs> and I was it's, like, it's not bad. And you're like, yeah, that's like not Actually, great. Zyger said the exact same thing. <laughs> <laughs> putting the USB port in on the first try every time. You guys, uh, great minds, think alike. Uh, so we've got uh, the Monkey King says the ability to speak to butterflies. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Flamey Buddha says the ability to detect farts. I mean, I don't think that you need a superpower. You could, you could. (laughs) One thing that would be very helpful for you on at least three days a week is getting me to end the show on time. Oh, that That would be be super helpful. Mm. But I don't know how you communicate Mm. that. I know what you're working on. I don't know how to communicate that in like five seconds. You know, (laughs) you wouldn't be able to communicate it. No, you'd have to communicate it with it with fifteen. The power to be able to remove stickers from boxes without leaving that. Oh, that's that's a really good one. That's a really good one. that one. That is key lock in the chat. I'll say this. I will yeah. say, going back to the USB thing, not to underplay this, how many on average times do you think it takes, how many how many tries do you think it takes on average for you to get that thing in? It's three. It's three, right? 100%. It's always three. I do it one way, and it's then the right it's like, way, no, that's but not, not the right way. <laughs> and then I do it the other way, I'm like, oh no, this no, is really the wrong way. The first way. And then I turn it back. And it's and always right. opposite <laughs> of what you think it should be. Yep. Right? To me, it's always like the, the, the smaller part 
the bigger part on the UFC stick should be up and push it in, but it's never that no. until well, it is. Kevin the Killer says until the ability to find out. No, not that one. The ability. No, Dat Boy Tommy. The ability to perfectly microwave food. That would mm, be a good one. That'd be a good one. Not too hot. Not too cold. Not too cold. So it's not cold in the not middle. Not mushy. But you're not gonna like burn the roof of your mouth. Yeah, I like mm. this. That would be a good one. To, to right, the I'm point too, where you can. I'm gonna look these over in the chat okay. while you guys okay. finish this. All right, up. we're gonna wrap this up. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Andrea. Renee. Don't forget, Games Daily starts soon. Starts uh, in roughly eight minutes. We don't have time to go into the big topic okay. today. Okay. We'll it's come back to that tomorrow. Maybe we'll come back to that tomorrow. But I wanted to hear both Actually, of your opinions. You're not I'm, here tomorrow. Huh? I, I might not be here tomorrow. I might be here tomorrow. Okay. We'll see. Maybe I'm I not here we tomorrow. Have, I think we have a minority report. No, it's Greg and Andy tomorrow, nope, I just kidding. think. I think the minority report might be on Wednesday. I was just excited to have a minority report. I might be able to come in tomorrow, though. i got to figure this out. We'll talk about it later. All righty, We will talk about that story at some point this week. How about that? We will indeed. All right, everyone. Uh, let's go into tips. Do you want to pull those up? Yeah, I can if we definitely can. pull those up. Tips and bits. Can you see bits we'll on there see. as well, or is that yes. not a thing that you can do? We'll see. Okay. If, we'll see if this actually works. How about that? Ooh, Salty CSC13 says the ability to parallel park without doing any damage. That's huge. I don't know if tip, I don't know how I look at tips. Well, I don't know. This is your thing. I know. Figure that out while you do that. I'm going to read P.S. I love this best friend, XOXO. This is your opportunity, everyone out there, uh, to give someone a little pat on the back. You think it's just being a good best friend out there. Uh, kindoffunny.com slash best friend. You can go there. You fill out the form, just like Travis did. Travis is shouting out Tommy, a.k.a. Nightwing, shouting out my brother who got me into Kind of Funny. He's had a really rough year with anxiety and other issues, but, uh, but through it all, always showed what a Kind of Funny best friend is by being positive as much as possible and can use some of your sweet, nasty love. Everyone... Uh, I don't have his Twitter, but uh, if you know Tommy, aka Nightwing, uh, please give him some sweet nasty love and tell him, tell him we're all there, man. We're all in this together, and all of us have anxiety, and sometimes I just want to sleep all day, and that's just what happens. But I'm glad he's uh, getting through it, and we're glad to be here for him. Uh, any luck? I don't think we have any tips. We have some bits. But Let's no read the bits. bits. I don't think the tips are coming have. through. Um, Let us know in the chat if you've left a tip and it's not coming. Throw through. Throw seven. Gave us 500 bits, thank you very much, and said, take a day off. Also, Joey's 15 seconds of Persona, please. Okay, so I started Persona 4 Golden, and so far I have, I'm only like four days in, but I really like it, but I don't like the music as much as I Nine like Persona seconds. 5. Um, I'm waiting for Gary Widow to finish Persona 5 so we can do a spoiler cast, and maybe or maybe not, I will steal Andrew Goldfarb to also do a spoiler cast with us. But That's Gary it. needs to finish it. All right, you're done, you're through. Um, the Andy Prince left us 500 bits with okay. no message. And then, I think that's it today. All right, if we missed your tip, we apologize. We'll try and go back and get all of them once we figure this system out. Let us know if you've left the tip um, in the chat. Uh, Amy Gills reminds me of something. Congratulations, Ireland. You guys are, did you see the big vote happen in Ireland? Yes, I did. Congrats. They have, uh, they have lifted a very long ban on abortion. Uh, and they're showing, it's, uh, Ireland has been long, a very conservative country for a very long time. And it's looking like they're uh, pushing more toward progress. And so, I don't know what Amy feels about that, but I think it's great. Congratulations, Ireland. Yeah, progress. There you go. Progress, progress is always progress. good. Always good, in my opinion. Always good. Nick, didn't the tips die for good, says Brian McBrian13. No, tip didn't die for good. Stream tip died. The service we use uh, to uh, tie in tips with Twitch died. They just unceremoniously went out of business. Just decided to kill it. And apparently everyone but us saw that coming. We were like, what? That's a shocker. And people were like, no, they've been reporting on this for months. Uh, we just don't look into that kind of news. Let's see. Tips are back, says Moobot. Let's see. Streamlabs. That kind of funny. I don't know. Is that right? Yeah. Is that where people have to go to tip? Yes. But Moobot is just like a... No, I know Moobot's a thing. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, it has bot in the name. I'm not that dumb. There are people that just like talk to it because they think that it's like a thing. It's like, oh, thanks, man. It's like, no. Let's look into this because I'm sure people have left a tip. Well, I'm sorry, everyone. If, uh, oh, Amy Gills agrees. That's fantastic. Uh, all right. Let's go into the giveaway. Joey. Yes. This is a fun test for you. Why don't you tell people how they can win the giveaway? Uh, you can be watching live right now. Just like Twitch. Kawhi Monster 805. Guess what? You haven't won anything, but you did win my heart for watching live. <laughs> 
Uh, you can be a subscriber for, at twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. You can either give us real money, or if you have Amazon Prime, you can link your Amazon Prime account with your Twitch account, which gives you Twitch Prime, and you get a bunch of cool stuff. You get some Fortnite loot if you like that game, which I've been watching a lot of lately. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. It's like my new go-to like TV substitute like after dinner at night. Mm -hmm. Um, you can be a two dollar above subscriber on Patreon. Patreon.com slash kind of funny, or you can be a two dollar above sub subscriber on Patreon.com slash kind of funny games. Woo! It's a Ladies lot of and gentlemen, to so many things to remember, so many ways to split the audience's attention. But I'm going to bring it right back to center. If there's one thing I love, and you all know this about me, it's meat, and I love barbecuing meat. I'm from Southern California. A lot of my happy memories. Uh, were shared with my brother and my dad outside barbecuing, mm -hmm. sitting by the pool, yeah. uh, getting ready for dinner. Mom's there too, helping out. Everyone's everyone's having a great time. Uh, Got and some music playing. Music, let me get a little music playing. You know, it's uh, we we've, we've mom's having a good day, so she's letting us have the AC inside. Mm. So it's nice and high outside as the sun's setting. Yeah. You know, but then you go inside, it's crisp. It's nice. You get a diet coke or something fun. Yeah. And you can hang out. Well, everyone. This episode of the Kind of Funny Morning Show is brought to you by Omaha Steaks. Uh, Father's Day is just around the corner, and if you have trouble getting your dad a gift, if you're trying to find that perfect gift for Father's Day, guess what? Omaha Steaks has you covered. Give the gift of meat. Trust me, if I was a dad, if I had sired a child, mm -hmm. and that child was like, Pop, I know you're on a low-carb diet. I know you love the meat. I got, you, I got you this great deal for Omaha Steaks. I'd be like, son, I've done one thing right in my life. I've trained you to please me. Does this mean that Greg needs to get you Omaha Steaks for Father's Day? Because he calls me daddy? Yeah. Yes. Unequivocally. Everybody should tell. He needs to absolutely do it. Well, Greg has done that because we are actually, in fact, after Kind of Funny Games, or after Games Daily, we yeah. are, in fact, barbecuing uh, with Omaha Steaks because they didn't send us the steaks. Uh, I believe Greg's dad sent him the steaks because Greg's dad, that's the thing, too. It's a two-way street, ladies and gentlemen. If it's Father's Day and you're the father and your kid... Uh, doesn't want you can't afford to get you anything or whatever. You send your kid the steaks, Shoot, and then you go over. Well, I mean, I used to when I was like in college, I used to basically mooch off my parents. I was like, I'm not getting you a gift. I got to come yeah. over. The, I'll give you the gift of my time, of my presence. That's all I have. Yeah. So you can order them for yourself and barbecue right now. Perfect because the weather is fantastic here in, in northern and southern California. It's time for barbecue. We're doing mm -hmm. that. Uh, they have a great deal for you, right? This is a very easy, convenient way to get stuff. Uh, Omaha Steaks delivered hand trim. Delivers hand-trimmed, flash-frozen, and vacuum-sealed meats directly to your door in an Omaha Steak Cooler. They have a wide variety of meats that they can give you. Uh, pork, poultry, veal, lamb, bison, seafood, vegetables, all sorts of things. Vegetables not being a meat, but they didn't say it. They never claimed it was a meat. I claim it's a meat. Uh, but it goes very well. It pairs well with meat, especially grilled meat. All of the highest quality cuts with one-of-a-kind flavor, all beef. Uh, is USDA inspected for quality and aged for 21 days to unlock the full flavor and tenderness of the cuts. Of course, you can customize the order. Oma Steaks even gives you the, uh, the option to customize cuts for your dad's grill, grilling needs, fine recipes, wine pairing, etc. They got you covered. Anything that has to do with steak, they got you covered. Uh, here's the offer, ladies and gentlemen. And I like reading this because it's so much... It makes my mouth water. Right now, Omaha Steaks is giving a limited time offer to the listeners for Father's Day at 78% off. This is really an amazing deal. Go to omahasteaks.com, type morning in the search bar, and you get this Omaha Steaks Father's Day package, which includes two tender filet mignons, two beefy top sirloins, four chicken fried steaks, two boneless pork chops, four all beef Omaha Steak burgers, four go gourmet jumbo franks, 12 ounces of all beef meatballs, one pound of steakhouse fries, That's four a caramel apple tarts, I'm not done yet, tartlets, uh, four caramel apple tartlets, one Omaha Steaks seasoning, seasoning packet, plus get four more grill-ready Omaha Steaks burgers free with the purchase. I'll tell you right now, that right there would be a great week for me. If I could just cook that every day, I would be in hog heaven. Again, this is a limited time package for only $49.99 when you go to omahasteaks.com. Type morning in the search bar and add Father's Day package to your cart. Don't wait. The offer ends soon. Go to omahasteaks.com. Type morning in the search bar and grab grab your dad and fire up that grill. Now, Greg, my father's not here, so one of us has to be each other's daddy today. I think you know better than anybody. No, I do. You're my daddy. Okay. I like that. Well, you know, I stomped in here because I was, I thought for sure you were reading subs. <laughs> I didn't think the show was still going. 
Oh, you guys later. I'm sorry. Yeah, we had some uh, we had some issues where we were having a great conversation, so I apologize. Yeah, man, as long if... as the content's there. Huh? Superman. He's Superman. I think you yeah, but it's a ho- but Andrew, it's a holiday. Andrew came in to yell at you, and I thought, then I heard you stop. But I she came in, and so I'm doing this new thing where I remember that we're friends, and then she comes on the show, and we start talking, and then she becomes part of the problem. Yeah. See, we would have been done by now, but she came in, and we had a great rap about like, what's your ba- like, what's a dumb superpower that you could have? It's yeah. True. Uh, I said my favorite. Per- if I could pick a stupid. This. But as I was walking, I said, "Okay, now wrap it up." But then you got me thinking. I really don't think you paid enough uh, mind to my Uber idea. See, Greg, my superpower would be getting Uber to pick you up on the correct side of the street every single time. Ooh, that's a good one. This is a good See, one, right? That's a good one. She wants a it, mediocre one. Uh, right? How many? Well, it's not a good uh, superpower. I got a bunch of good ones in the chat. I think I know. I think I know which one I'm gonna do. All right. Very cool. Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to pick a winner. I'm wrapping it up. <laughs> Today's winner comes from the Twitch chat. Congratulations to Cat Seventy Four Poutine. You have won Fate Extilia, the Umbral Star on PS4. It's my favorite game of all time, next to Persona Four. But Persona <laughs> Five is just a trash heap. It's a trash heap. What would you do? What would you say if I legitimately was like I beat Persona Five yesterday? I would have so many questions for you, and then I would convince them not to do games daily so that we could just talk about Persona Five. I like that you would just beat it yesterday. What if I just beat it yesterday? <laughs> like you played the entire game yesterday. When did it come All out? 100 hours of the game. Oh my god, 100 hours of the game. It came out like last May. Oh, for the love of all that is holy. Everyone, we're going to go into the 3 and 3 now. If you're watching this live with us on twitch.tv slash games, this is your opportunity to ask us questions or talk to us. We're going to talk to the uh, non-subscribers and then we'll go into my favorite mode, sub-only mode, where we reward you for giving us your hard-earned dollars by us <laughs> talking to you. Frog and Bullfish eighty nine said the ability to win all of kind of funny's giveaways. <laughs> That'd be good, man. You get you you'd win a lot of Fate Extilia. We give that game away a lot. We had a lot of them. We do. Uh, Lenart NL says, Nick, can I get some encouragement words for my job interview tomorrow? Well, Lenart, you're amazing. And I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but go to uh, my my Twitter feed, and I think he's the one that did this, right? Lenart has. Oh done no, Lenart did the Lenart did the dinosaur one, right? Leonard did one of them for us, but I can't remember. Leonard which did the dinosaur one. one. The dinosaur one was amazing. You're amazing at what you do. You make people laugh. You're fantastic. You unfortunately didn't do the one I'm talking about, but if anyone wants to go and you don't follow me on Twitter, follow at Nick underscore Scarpino. Go and look at my banner uh, because it is one of the. I forget who did it, but it's the. It's it's, it's amazing. So it's so good. It's, it's very good. Everything. It's everything. It's fire. I hate you. Everyone hates me, but you know what? You hate me because I just show. All of you, how ridiculous you're being on a daily basis. No, because like that's a not a thing that like any of us say with any regularity. It's <sighs> you're punishing us for the works of somebody else that doesn't work in this it's office. The worst of society. CKC15 says, Nick, I am done teaching for the summer. What should my summer goal be? Ooh, that's fun. Summer um, goals. I'd have to know more about you and know what you like, but I always like a summer fitness goal, right? Because it's nice outside, it's warm outside, uh, it's it's it, it gets darker later, so you can go to the gym whenever you want. I love. When oh, it it's gets so great! Later. Oh, I love it. Um, your goal should be something fun. Start something new physically that you've never done before, Ooh. like jujitsu or lifting or something fun like that, and do it for three months because you have a great three month span where you can just dedicate five days a week to it. I wouldn't recommend doing five days a week off the bat. But you can go a couple days and, and and have fun. And if you want something a little less intensive, yoga. Ooh. Yoga. I've often thought if I had three months straight, what would I do? And I'm like, what if I did yoga every day? You'd be so limber. It'd be so fun, right? I wouldn't be tight anymore. Your core power? My core power would be powerful. Off the wall. Uh, C. Moron, sa- or Moran, excuse me, says Adam Sandler in review. Maybe, maybe. Oh, that'd be rough. Um, it that might be Netflix a bit rough. Run. Oh my God. Did you see it? Over the weekend, I was watching The 40 Year Old Virgin. Okay. Did you see me tweet? No. So I was like, I, I, I was I criticized Judd Apatow a little bit for his movies being very long, and I still stand by that. I think there's there's like a good 10, 15 minutes out of every one of his movies that I've ever watched. I'm like, this doesn't need to be. Yeah. There. They're funny scenes, but like when you can't pause, like I like watching them at home because I can pause, I go out, I come back, I watch. Yeah, I, I, I took me like seven hours movie. to watch the 40 year old version because I had stuff I was doing. I just paused it, went out, did a workout, came back, watched it again. But I was like, you know what? I'm really enjoying this movie, and I never do this. Greg does it all the time. Mm-hmm. I never do this. So I said, hey, add Judd Apatow. I'm, wa- I'm re-watching The 40-Year-Old Virgin on Netflix, and I just wanted you to know I'm really enjoying it. You did a great job making this film. If you see Paul Rudd, could you let him know he did a great job, too? Oh, no. Are you talking about re The 40-Year-Old Virgin, or are you wrapping up the show? I'm wrapping up the show. <laughs> 
This is a lot an of people, unprecedented third visit from Andrea Renee. A lot of people liked it. Yeah. Okay. And I'm like, I thought it was a nice thing to do. I, was, I just wanted to put some positivity out in the world, not mm -hmm. expecting to be rewarded for it. But of course, Judd Apatow, being the, the dope man that he is, quote tweeted me and said, calling Rudd now. That's dope. I did not see that. What a nice set. guy. What, what a, a nice great guy. Man. All right, everyone, let's go into sub only mode before Andrea comes back in here stomping in her Air Force Ones. Big boy stomping. She wears the heels Force too, ones. so it's so commanding. So you can hear go her go coming. Go 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 go. Andrea said that you're just delaying the barbecue, which is not. No, no, no. I'm gonna go bar. That's true. I'm sorry. Uh, Aunt Tony eighty two says Nick Joey, are we watching Arrested Development tomorrow? Oh, fantastic. Nightwing. I'm sorry. Are, that's a question. <laughs> oh, are we watching it? No. Um, I don't really care about Arrested Development anymore. I, I got Archer in my life. Archer's the better Arrested Development. I like Arrested Development. I'm feeling a little conflicted about Arrested Development. Well, these days. Yeah, this is the Jeffrey that, Tambor uh, stuff. The Jeffrey Tambor stuff. Did you see the article that came out for, I think it was the New York Times, um, when they were asking Jessica about um, her like encounter with Jeffrey Tambor mm -hmm. and uh, Jason Bateman. Not, not super great. Well, I mean, I saw the interview where yeah. she was like, where he was like, look, lots of people fight. Like, I think I've only heard quotes from this, so I don't yeah. want to misspeak. I should actually go back and watch the whole thing. But from what I understand, I think he and uh, Tony, uh, what's Hale. his name, Hale, were just like, hey, let's try to defuse this situation and get out of this. And I think that was the wrong look. I think that was the wrong way to do it. Because uh, I mean, what it looked like, like it was. three different times. Yeah, so it looked know. like, from what I understand, uh, three dudes were trying to mansplain a woman's feelings to her. And that's just the bad uh, Yeah, look. and a woman who has been in the industry for 60 years. I'm also going to shout out uh, a woman who is probably one of the funniest parts of Archer. If you're not watching Archer, mm -hmm. Fucking watch Archer. She's hilarious. Hilarious. Really like animated. Adult animated. It's not things. really animated though. It's mostly just okay. a bunch of dick jokes. Uh, let's see. Nightwing five nine three says, Nick, did you watch yesterday's uh, Stephen Thompson versus Darren Till fight? It was a good striking chess match. If you didn't see it, check it out. I did watch it actually. It was on Fox Sports One. I really enjoyed it. Although, great match, but he but but Thompson deserved to lose that uh, because Till pushed the pushed the pace at every second, and I think that that counts a lot in my book. Uh, See, Mystery Asked My Throne, it says, Nick, uh, Taron Edgerton was one of the front runners for young Han Solo before Alden was chosen and edged him out. Um, that's unfortunate, because I think he would have done a better job. Mm. Uh, let's see. Greedy Ears says, worked at Comic-Con over the weekend and saw a lot of people fan, girl, boy out. Who would make you do that? Uh, lots of people. Who would there, you fan boy out over? So I've thought about this, like, because I feel like there, we get a lot of really cool guests in our office. But because I don't necessarily have, like, the... I took a long-term nerd break, mm -hmm. as I like to say. So, like, people that come in I don't necessarily have the same, like, connection to as the other people in the office. Um, but the one person who would come in and I would, like, have to fangirl out a little bit uh -huh. is Almost Scott like. Porter, who Greg's, like, friends with and is trying oh, has, yeah. like, been trying to get on the show for, like, years. Oh, yeah. Scott's a good guy. Yeah. We had him on afternoon. Yeah, and yeah. we haven't had him on anything yet, but yeah. I love Friday Night Lights and Heart of Dixie so much that like I would have to fangirl out a little bit. No, I'm not. Oh, we're no! done. We're done. We're wrapping it up. Ah! Uh, <laughs> the unprecedented fourth. Visit side note: I met night. Jimmy O Yang over the weekend. Wait, I stopped what? by the punchline to see one of my friends uh -huh. and popped in, and I met him. <gasps> he's the guy that plays Jin Yang on uh, Silicon Valley. Oh my gosh! He was like, he was here doing gigs, and I think he's going to class for us. Anyway, ladies Woo! and gentlemen. Thank you uh, so much for joining us. This was a long one. I actually started the show thinking we're going to wrap this up at 12, but I had such a great time talking with you, Joe, the power duo, uh, that uh, we went a little long. I apologize to everyone if you just tuned in for Kind of Funny Games. It is coming up right now yeah. with Andrew Renee. And if you're like, what is that? I'm watching this on YouTube. Well, go to youtube.com slash Kind of Funny Games and check that out. It's our other daily show that talks about uh, the nerdy news you need to know in video games. Everyone, we'll be back tomorrow, uh, 11 a.m. PT. Until then, have a lovely, lovely holiday.